Hi, I'm Erica Gammon, and in this video, I want to show you how to use cross-references to create a more stylized table of contents using InDesign and In5. In a previous video, I showed you how to insert cross-references in a document based on paragraph styles. And in another video, I showed you how to set up a table of contents. If you're not familiar with either of those, you might want to check out those videos as well. In this sample, I have a table of contents, or a TOC, set up using the built-in TOC function but I want to make something a little less rigid. So I'm going to set up the look, then I'll add in the cross references that will show the proper information, and that will set up the navigation for when I export to HTML within five. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to delete this existing table of contents, and I'm going to create a frame where my product information will go. I'm just going to type in product name so I have some stand in text here. And what I'm doing is I'm going to look for the product names that are on these other pages. And those all have specific paragraph styles to them. So I'll assign a paragraph style to this text here that I already have set up. Now we'll make sure my frame is big enough here. And then I also secretly have hiding off on the page over here. I have a page number set up as well. And it has a paragraph style assigned to it. And I'm just going to arrange it how I might want it to look on the page. Right now I have them just layered in such a way so my page number is sitting back behind. You can also anchor your text frames if you'd want to, but keep in mind that whatever is anchored in is automatically in front. So if I anchored the page numbers to the product name, the page numbers would be sitting in front. So that's just something to keep in mind for your particular workflow. I'm going to go ahead and group these instead of doing the anchoring. And then I'm going to now assign the cross reference that will point to the places that we need it to navigate to. So I'm just going to keep double clicking till I have the product name selected. And I'm going to go up under the type menu and choose hyperlinks and cross references and insert a cross reference. So now you can see it says a page number. That's not what we want. First, we need to make sure that we're grabbing the right thing. I'm looking for product name in my layout group. That's the paragraph style that I've assigned to my product names throughout my catalog here. And the first one I want to look for is Hyannis Port. And I don't want the page number, so I'm going to pull down this menu and choose full paragraph. And it puts the name of it, but it also put quotes around it. So I'm going to click this little edit pencil, and I'm going to delete the quotes from this definition box here. And if I want to, I can assign a character style. I'm just going to choose that and say, OK. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the page number. We're going to choose the same option, but you notice it disappeared. And that's because it's putting in too much text in that little box. So I'm doing product name, Hyannis port. But in this case, I only want to do the page number. And again, I need to edit it because there's extra text in here that I don't need. I just want the page number showing up. So we'll say OK. And now I have my page number. And I actually don't like where that's sitting. I'm just going to make a slight change here. Before I take this and start duplicating it. So I'm going to Option or Alt select on this and just delete it, or I'm sorry, just duplicate it a couple times. And then maybe. Just do some fun freeform layout, something like that. I'm going to select all of them and align them just so they look a little neater. But now we need to change the information that's in each of those frames. So I'll show you one. I'm going to select the text, go back up under type, and under hyperlinks and cross references, I already have a cross reference in there. I need to change the information it's pulling. So I'm going to choose cross reference options. And instead, I'm going to choose this Oslo winter. And I'm going to do the same thing for the page number. Oops, and make sure we have Oslo winter in there. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other ones. So now that that's all done, we can see all the products that are in my catalog. Now, if something changes, for instance, let's take this information and we'll cut it from the page and let's paste it on a whole different page. When we jump back to our table of contents, we can see that that's updated. Maybe one of our products changes names. Let's come in here to this Hyannis port and we'll call it the Hyannis port 2. And I go back to the table of contents and I see that it hasn't updated. When the destination has changed, we have to go into our cross references 
and be sure to refresh them so that that shows up. So now let's go ahead and save this and we'll go ahead and export that within five. Let's come to our table of contents. We can jump to the products and back now to page eight back. There are other ways to stylize the TOC, including building the page numbers as anchored objects inside of the TOC that gets generated by InDesign. As I said, it all depends on what works best for your workflow, but I do hope that the video at least gives you some ideas and gets you to think about interactive tables of contents in a whole new way. Be sure to check out In5 at in5.us, and if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching.